it's much appreciated. But yo, check it. It was styrofoam trays out of my trunk, making something out of nothing for what the people want. Threw on a black shirt, put my hand. Welcome to the Iwazo Show. Let's make something out of nothing. Today we have some really easy, loaded, cheesy chicken nachos. Everybody loves nachos because you can add whatever you like. They're easy to make and a perfect appetizer for any occasion. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you never miss another recipe. And let's get right into it. All right, as you guys can see, here we have the nachos. Nachos are definitely one of my favorite appetizers because you can get so versatile with them. Throw whatever you want on them as long as they got cheese and you're good to go. Here's our ingredients for the day. Don't worry, the exact measurements and items will be listed in the description. So let's get right into the recipe. All right, first up we have tortilla chips. Now it's really, really easy to make homemade tortilla chips. All you're gonna do is slice them up and fry them up. Now I have a funny story because somebody brought it to my realization one time that when you're eating all those tortilla chips at a Mexican restaurant or some dip, you don't realize how many tortillas you're actually eating. And then you're frying them, so when you look at the calories, you're gonna be in for a shocker, but hey, who's really counting calories, right? So we're gonna heat up the frying oil of your choice and just fry them bad boys up. As you can see, I'm tossing them around in the pan, making sure they don't get crowded and start sticking together. Grab whatever you can find, push them around, and they're gonna come out nice and crispy, just like this. Salt the tortilla chips up a little bit, give them a good toss, and you're gonna be good to go. Now we're gonna get into some of our vegetable toppings. Yes, we're gonna have some vegetables in the recipe. We're gonna get a little healthy. I'm gonna show you guys a quick onion trick. You're gonna slice it this way, then you're gonna add some slices into it vertically, then you're gonna slice it horizontally, you're gonna get the perfect diced onions. And another little quick onion tip, instead of crying, throw a little wet paper towel beside the onions, and I promise for some reason it works and you won't get teary-eyed. So as you can see, we're just dicing this up, slicing and dicing, showing off a little nice skills, and then boom, you have the perfect diced onions. Nobody likes huge chunks of onions, so make sure you do this right and you should be good to go. Next, we're gonna get into our tomatoes. So here I have some Roma tomatoes, but instead of having soggy chips, we're gonna take out that inside. So just cut your tomatoes in half like that and then scoop out all those insides. So after gutting your tomato, this is what you should end up with. You're gonna just slice that up and I honestly feel like that's part of the reason people don't like tomatoes, the insides and the watery part because if you have a big old tomato on a sandwich bun, all it does is makes everything soggy and it's not enjoyable. Now we're gonna season our chicken up. Of course, we have to use some of the staples. The staples are onion powder. Then we're gonna hit it with a little garlic powder. After that, we're gonna throw in some chili powder. And make sure you season both sides. I'm not showing on this part, but they are gonna be seasoned. Then we're gonna add in a little black pepper. And of course, we have to add in some of that salt. All right, now it's time to cook the chicken. Now I will say with this recipe, you can freestyle this a little bit. I would love to see somebody try grilling the chicken maybe baking the chicken, boiling it, I'm not sure. However, I feel like this way gives you the best end result. As you guys will see, as we cook this chicken up, it's gonna come out amazing. So pretty much all we're doing right now is adding the chicken into a hot skillet. First, I added in some olive oil. We bring it up to about medium to medium high heat because the goal here is to not fully cook the chicken at this point, we just want a beautiful sear. Moment of silence for the sear. Wow, as you guys can see, really quickly, all that seasoning on there gave us the perfect sear. So all we're doing right now is flipping the rest of that chicken over, making sure each side is beautifully seared, and then we're gonna sear the other side and get to the next part. All right, so now this next step in the recipe is pretty much making somewhat of a sauce for your chicken. So to the same pan, we're gonna add in some tomato paste, then we're gonna grab a little bit of water, add that in, and then we're gonna mix this up really good, scraping the bottom of the pan. If y'all know me, and all of saving all the flavor from a recipe, no flavor left behind. So mix that up and then you're gonna get a nice consistency, not a thick sauce, really like something thin to cook the chicken in. So as you guys can see, I cheated a little bit off camera and cut the chicken up, but this is just so that it can cook more quickly. We're gonna add all that chicken in and allow it to really simmer, slow cook, so to say, until the chicken is nice and tender. It's gonna be fall off the bone. We don't have a bone, but y'all get the point. So now you really just have to let your chicken hang out like this. Remember, we only seared the outside, so let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's finished cooking and tender. Now we're gonna get started on our sauce. First to a small pot, we're gonna add in some carnation milk, carnation evaporated milk. I had a situation where somebody used sweetened condensed milk by me saying carnation milk and it came out with a sweet recipe, so 
Don't do that. And now we're adding in Velveeta cheese. I don't know if people have against Velveeta cheese, but it makes the perfect sauce every time. As you can see, nice and velvety, kind of goes with the name. I'm just gonna kick it up with a little cayenne pepper to taste. So as you can see, after about 15 to 20 minutes, our chicken is done cooking. It isn't as tender as I wanted it to, but you can change that by throwing in a little more water, letting it simmer for a little bit. And it also may be my spatula I was using. You can chop it up, but I feel like leaving it in the pan and breaking it up is better because the broken up chicken soaks up all that flavor. And you end up with something beautiful just like this. So that's our chicken topping. Let's get started on our sour cream. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love, love, love the Chipotle style sour cream where it's not really thick, it's nice and loose, so you can mix it together with everything. You gotta add a little bit of water to your sour cream until you get the perfect consistency, just like this. Now it's time for the assembly. Again, the favorite part of everybody's recipe. Now, I like to have my nachos fully loaded. So we're gonna layer every single part of this nacho recipe. We're gonna throw down our fresh tortilla chips, then after that, we're gonna just along some of that good old cheese sauce we made, queso, whatever you wanna call it. Then we're gonna add on some of that beautifully seasoned chicken, nice and full of flavor. Remember, we didn't have a really thick sauce, just enough to coat the chicken so you don't have dry chicken. Nobody likes dry nachos. Now again, remember I told y'all, we are having some vegetables in this recipe, so it technically is healthy, right? Add on your diced onions and your diced up tomatoes and the guacamole. I'm so mad because at the beginning of the recipe, we had a technical difficulty that allowed us to not record this process, but don't worry. I'm having a fire guac recipe in the description for y'all. As you can see, we're drizzling on that sour cream. No dollars throughout the recipe. Make sure you get all the ingredients spread throughout, and there you have it. Cheesy chicken, loaded nachos, the eat with Zoe. As y'all can see, you can throw whatever you want on them. I advise you follow this recipe. Perfect for any game night, any game day, or just want to eat nachos. Let me dig in, and that's it. All right, y'all. It's much appreciated. But yo, check it. It was styrofoam trays out of my trunk, making something out of nothing for what the people want. Threw on a black shirt, put my hands to work.